Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is first grade, module six, lesson seven. And in this lesson, students are, go are going to continue their counting and extend their counting into up to 120. Uh, so it's going to be kind of cool. Now the directions do say to use hide zero cards. That's totally not really necessary. Although, you know, if you want, you can use them. So don't go freaking out if you don't have hide zero cards. Those were found in lesson three. Uh, so to relax, and you, you don't necessarily need them. Let's just get started. So the focus is to be using this vertical grid to do the counting and to have our students practice and re remember how to, you know, count 51, 52, 53. Uh, th so this is your tens, right? Your five tens all the way up to six tens. And then this is your, gr your column of six tens plus some ones. And then you get to 70 and you switch over. You know, really, I think, I don't, okay, a couple of things about this. First off, I, I wonder why they started with one. You know, if they started with zero, it would be zero through nine, and then the next one would be 10 through 19, as in this column, all the whole column represents one 10 plus some ones, and then this column would be two 10s plus some ones. But because they started with one rather than zero, each column is a little bit of a me um, mixture. It's got two tens plus some ones all the way down to here where all of a sudden you have three tens and no ones. And then you scooch over to the next column and you continue with three tens and some ones. So parents and teachers consider, if you want, and you, um, you're not going to break anything, but consider doing your grid starting at zero and, and going that way. Another thing to consider <clears throat> is I wondered, as I was doing this lesson and studying this, why did we do a vertical? Why didn't we do kind of more the classic horizontal hundreds grid? And I think the reason, parents and teachers, and it's not fatal if you don't have a copy of this vertical grid, but I think their reasoning was in, as we're moving down, <clears throat> we want to highlight the fact that the tens are staying the same and only the ones are changing. And I think that becomes more obvious if we're moving vertically as opposed to if we had a traditional grid that was moving from left to right. All right? And then the idea is when we get down here, are we stuck, are we done, or can we continue? And of course, we want students to say, oh, we can continue. Now we have 100, and it's 100 plus 1, 100 plus 2, 100 plus 3. But we're going to practice without saying the word plus, or without the classic saying 100 and 1, or 100 and 2. So we're going to try and avoid saying the word plus, or the word and. We're just going to continue 101, 102, 103. 104. Now, that kind of mirrors back here when we did the say 10 way with our teens. Like, for example, 13, we would say 10, 3, 10, 4, 10, 5. Well, 10, 5 becomes 105. 10, 6 for 16 becomes 106. So we're not saying 10 and 6, we're saying 10, 6. That means over here, we're going to say 106, not 106. So that's a big, a little bit of a dwelling <laughs> on this uh, grid. Uh, why does it go vertical instead of horizontal? The consider starting at zero instead of one. This is kind of a, there's a lot to this first grade concept. And of course, because we are doing vertically, our grid here is vertical, and we're, our job is to fill in the missing numbers. So it's kind of nice. They begin with a lot of scaffolding. Start with 71, and then we've got 72, 73. Hey, look at that. We're right, because there's 74. 
and then we've got 75, 76, 77, 78, and sure enough, there's our self-check, 79 and 80. And so the idea is we're just going to keep going and keep working on our grid. Now, because uh, we are seeing a bunch of 710s, right, 710 and some 1s, so 710s and some 1s, we're going to end down here at all of a sudden 810s. Um, that means this is a grid that was based on a grid that started with the number 1. If you start with a number 0, your grid is going to be a little bit different here, and you might need to do some editing. So we're removing some scaffolding. We're adding some difficulty because now we're going horizontal. So write the numbers in. Fill in the numbers to continue the counting. So we've got 99. What comes after 99? 100. What comes next? 101. What comes next? 102. 103. So parents and teachers, help your students learn to say the number 103, not 103. And that's the process for this problem. Going down here, we're adding to the complexity. We have to figure out which one of these sequences is incorrect. 116, 117, 118, 119, 120. Well, everything seems fine right here. Let's take a look at B. 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, one, oh, 110. What should have come next? Well, obviously, it should have been 101. So our job is to write it correctly. So let's do that. So it should have been 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101. So it should look like this, not like that. And for the last slide of this video, once again, they just continue adding to the complexity. This is beautifully sequenced from question one all the way through question four. They just gradually re remove the scaffolding and the support system and, and cause the student to do a little bit more of the thinking. I love it. So what's this? 113, 114, what comes next? Well, 115, etc. 116. Alright, let's take a look at C. 102, so what comes next? At this point, we're going to assume we're counting up by ones, so it's going to be 103, 104, 105. How about D? So that's 88, 89, what comes after 89? Well, it would be 90. And then 91, 92, 93. And at all points, parents and teachers, if your students are struggling with the abstract concept of just these numbers, make sure you always consider going backwards in the CPA process. So we're at the abstract because we're dealing with just plain old numbers. Consider if you have some students who are struggling, go backwards one step and use pictures, pictorial. For example, on 88, 89, I might start with some quick tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones. So here's my eight tens and eight ones. There's my 88. And then I might say, okay, well, let's add 89, 90. So there's, we just filled in a quick 10. So we now have nine, one, nine tens and no ones. And then we've got one one. So now we have nine tens and one one. So the idea is if students are struggling with the abstract, go backwards and do, go to the pictorial to, to provide scaffolding for your students. I skipped B. I saved it for the last because I actually think it's the hardest because it doesn't give us starting numbers. It leaves us blank. So this is actually, in my mind, the hardest. So we're going to let your students find whatever method they want to fill in these correct values. 
And there's a variety of ways students might come at, uh, come up with the explanation that that's 119, this is 118, and this is 117. So a variety of ways that students might use to explain their thinking. Parents and teachers enjoy that conversation around this problem. And that wraps up first grade module six, lesson seven. We are extending our counting up to 120. We may or may not be using hide zero cards, but we are relating our numbers. Like for example, 15 can be thought of as 10, five. And then 105 is gonna be thought of as 100. Five. So just in the same way that we used to say, uh, describe 15 as 10-5, with 105, we're going to describe it as 105. 